Manny Emue addresses his beef with a makeup brand, beauty gurus are copyright claimed by a TikTok user, and Vanessa Hudgens makes insensitive comments. Welcome to Reality, a segment where we report on multiple stories in a single video. Before I get into the stories, I just want to put out a disclaimer. Please do not send any hate to Manny Emue, Raw Beauty Christie, Soph Does Life, Jackie Ina, Vanessa Hudgens, or anyone else mentioned in these stories. This video is simply meant to report on the news. Manny Emue finally addressed controversy involving Revolution Beauty. For context, Revolution Beauty, also known as Makeup Revolution, is known for creating dupe versions of popular makeup products like Anastasia Beverly Hills' Subculture Palette, Too Faced's Sweet Peach Palette, and Laura Mercier's Face Illuminating Highlighting Powders. Kat Von D also called Revolution Beauty out for copying her popular Shade and Light eyeshadow palette. Back in February 2020, beauty fans noticed that Revolution Beauty's Glass Crystal Illuminators packaging looked extremely similar to a highlighter released by Lunar Beauty, Manny Emue's brand. Several people weren't surprised. That's Makeup Revolution's whole MO. It's not surprising at this point. Makeup Revolution is literally a ripoff brand, no? All their products are dupes for other things from what I've gathered. Packaging-like, I mean. Makeup Revolution doesn't sit right with me as a brand. People get so upset when people don't credit artists on social media, but at the same time support a brand that always takes concepts and ideas from established brands? Intellectual property is a real thing. Doesn't matter if it comes from a small indie brand artist or a huge famous brand. I don't like ripoffs. But other people said Lunar Beauty's packaging wasn't entirely original. Am I crazy or is this not a terribly unique packaging idea? Here is NARS 2018 collection. What makes the Luna Beauty packaging so nice is the opal effect. NARS indented their packaging with their brand name. Obviously, Makeup Revolution looks cheaper and more chintzy, but what do we expect from them? This isn't anything special. The packaging isn't that unique, and I don't think there's really much overlap. If someone is going to buy from Manny, it's doubtful they'll suddenly change their mind because Makeup Revolution has similar packaging. And a few people said Manny was being hypocritical. Wasn't he supporting this brand like a year ago? They were doing the same thing then, just to other people. I thought the same. If you look up Manny MUA dupes on YouTube, he has a few videos with their products. He does say in the videos that he thinks the dupe is unfair to the original brand, but then he still makes videos about the products, saying good things about them. So... They even sponsor this video. Manny seemed to reference the situation in a tweet. Disappointed but not surprised has to be one of the worst feelings ever. On March 15th, Manny uploaded a video titled, I never wanted to make this video. In the video, he addressed what was going on with Lunar Beauty and Revolution Beauty. He said that while he is not the first brand to create prismatic style packaging, he said Revolution Beauty's packaging is identical to his. The facets, everything about it are the same in both compacts. I created this compact. I created it. This is something that me and my design team created. It is custom tooled. The factory that I have that created it, we custom tooled with them this component. This exact component with this exact, exact facets and everything. He showed proof the component was his own original creation, including the original design sheets and timestamp photos of the prototype in June 2018. Manny also brought up a comment from someone who allegedly spoke to Sally Minto, the digital director for Revolution Beauty. The commenter said Revolution Beauty didn't know about the design similarities until they were done with their own highlighter. Plus, the commenter said Revolution Beauty typically did not dupe products from smaller brands, only large ones. Sally allegedly replied to the comment, saying the company wasn't trying to dupe Lunar Beauty. Any similarities in the packaging would have come from the two brands using the same factories. Manny said he checked with his factory to see if they had been sharing his mold with any other brands. And so we reached out to our factory and was like, did you share this molding with anyone? And they didn't. And they said they did not, and they did not even create Makeup Revolutions at all. They didn't even create it in the, in the factory that we use. Like, this is not created in my factories. He also explained what he thought had happened. So in my opinion, the only way that this could have happened if my factory didn't make it would be to take my component and put it into a 3D printer and 3D print this exact thing and recreate it identically. Manny spoke about the difference between Revolution Beauty's previous dupes and this situation. What's frustrating for me as a small indie brand to have another brand allegedly copy my design is so frustrating, especially when it's a big 
brand, a big brand who has big budgets, who have deep pockets, who can literally just do whatever they want. And it's so frustrating because Makeup Revolution is known for duping other brands' products. And they'll come out with products that are similar to other brands, but they're never the same. And this is the same to me. In my opinion, this is the same. He said that while he had worked with Revolution Beauty in the past, this situation changed things. It sucks because I've worked with Makeup Revolution before. They were a great company to work for, and they were so fun to do partnerships with, and they were so easy and so cool. But I can't overlook this, and honestly, I can no longer support the brand because I am really, really saddened by this, and I'm just hurt by it. On a Reddit thread discussing Manny's video, a user explained how easy it was to get an exact copy of another brand's packaging. Buy the packaging you want to copy. Go to an art store and buy latex mold making powder and activating agent. Maybe $20 or so. Go home, rummage kitchen cabinets for an old container large enough to accommodate packaging and liquid molding product. Mix molding product and pour half into container. Put packaging into molding product and continue filling the container. Shake filled container to remove bubbles, then go watch Netflix while it cures. Once cured, open mold, remove package, and you now have a reverse mold of the package. To make a new package, you use that mold to make an exact duplicate. Maybe 24 to 72 hours, and depending on the size of the item you want to copy, it can cost less than $50 to do. I've done it with perfume bottles that are unique. In this industry, this whole exact replica process happens very fast. So fast that some companies have rooms dedicated to creating reverse molds of products with shake tables and vacuum models to pull bubbles out of the liquid molding medium. After Manny posted his video, Revolution Beauty responded with a statement posted on Instagram. The statement read, Revolution were presented this component by several third parties at a publicly attended trade fair in March 2019 and were led to believe that it was a freely available design. Our product, part of Revolution's glass collection, launched in February 2020. We were unaware of Lunar Beauty's product launch. On launch of our product, Lunar Beauty's legal team contacted us, but, despite our requests, failed to supply any evidence of his alleged copyright or trade dress right in his design, or even to identify or provide images or illustrations of the product that he claimed were at issue. Having seen Manny MUA's video, released on Sunday 15th March 2020, in which he produces documentation purportedly showing the componentry tooling of his product, even if not any protectable copyright or trade dress rights in that product, as a matter of courtesy and out of an abundance of caution, we have taken the immediate steps to remove the product from sale and will notify our distributors to do the same. Our intention is not to crush the spirit of entrepreneurialism. Our intention is to make beauty trends affordable for all. We do our our best not to make mistakes like this, but if we do, we take steps to make things right. And for that reason, we have acted quickly and passionately. We have reached out to Manny to discuss this privately. It's easy to understand why companies want to make affordable versions of luxury or high-end products, but blatantly stealing a design from an indie brand is not the same thing. While larger brands may be able to handle the loss of sales from the dupe product, indie brands don't have that luxury. Stealing intellectual property in this manner is never okay, but it hurts smaller brands more than larger ones, and it will prevent these brands from creating more unique products in the future. Do you think Manny has a right to be upset? A TikTok user copyright claimed several influencers. On February 28th, a TikTok user named Yarita made a TikTok about a makeup hack, putting on translucent powder before foundation to help your makeup stay in place all day. The TikTok went viral and several beauty YouTubers used it in videos where they tried TikTok makeup tricks. Two of those YouTubers were Soph Does Life and Raw Beauty Christy. Shortly after their videos went up, they were copyright claimed and they were briefly taken down. Soph tweeted, right, so the girl who posted the TikTok makeup hack of using powder before foundation has copyright claimed my recent YouTube video. I don't get it. Surely it's free promo of her TikTok. Gonna have to mute her part or she will earn all the AdSense from my video. Christy tweeted, My testing a viral TikTok makeup hack video was just copyright claimed for the one minute TikTok video I showed in the video that I was reacting to. I want to dispute it because they are going to receive my revenue for the video, but the dispute page looks scary on YouTube. 
Around this time, a Twitter user took a screenshot of one of Yarita's now-deleted tweets. I don't know how to take steps with copyright infringement, and I can't afford a lawyer. YouTubers with 1 million subscribers use my video without permission, and are making money off of it, lol, while I sit dead broke. Other people also shared screenshots of Yurita's replies about the situation on her TikToks. Someone wrote, It's fair use on their part, though. Plus, it's not like you invented that technique. Yurita replied, They didn't either, and they never credited who they learned it from. They want credit to make more money off me, lol, when I don't make anything. Use your brain cells next time. Yurita responded to more comments from the same person about the situation. If they use my content without my permission, it doesn't matter if they credit it. And no, actually, most didn't. I don't care about credit. You'd be mad if rich people were trying to get unnecessary credit from you when they didn't invent it to get more money while you get nothing. There's many popular YouTubers who committed copyright infringement and are making money with views based on my video. Jackie Ina, an influencer who is known for promoting a similar makeup hack, responded to Yurita's TikTok. It's not exact steps, but it's the same concept. Nobody rides harder for translucent powder under foundation harder than me, LMAO. All those extra steps aren't even necessary in my opinion you get the same, or better results, doing it my way. Christy later quote-tweeted her original tweet and gave her fans an update. I am in contact with Yurita, the girl from the viral makeup TikTok. Please nobody send her any hate. I have a feeling it was a big misunderstanding. Yurita also tweeted about the situation. Y'all, it's fair use. I didn't know that. Please stop attacking me. She quote-tweeted Soph's tweet about the situation and replied, I didn't know about fair use. I was wrongly advised. I never striked your video. Use whatever you want. I'm getting rude DMs and hate. I didn't invent it, and I have a whole video explaining Jordan Liberty's steps. Christy then tweeted an interesting update. This is my opinion. So get this, the company that copyright claimed my TikTok video is Collab A, Collab DRM. Their business model is to scour the internet for viral content, like the TikTok video, offer the creator a small amount of money in exchange for the rights to the video, and then copyright claim every creator who has used that content on YouTube. When you dispute the copyright claim with facts, such as fair use, they will deny your dispute. At that point, the only action you can take is to file a lawsuit and take them to court. They know this. Basically, by their actions, contacting creators who they know haven't made money from their content, offering them a little, and taking their rights to the videos, they can essentially steal thousands of dollars from across YouTube in false copyright claims. I react to a video, I film, edit, upload the content, reply to comments, etc., and because I fairly used a small portion of someone else's content, which clearly falls under fair use, they are allowed to claim the entire video. And don't you worry, they wait until it has accumulated hundreds of thousands of views, and all of its revenue before claiming it, so they can make sure they are gaining the full revenue from the video. All of the money that video makes will then go to them, who have nothing to do with the content. The only action that a creator at this point can take to make sure that all of the revenue made on that video doesn't go to the one claiming the content is to take them to court, an expensive and lengthy, frustrating process. The company knows this and knows likely most people will give up. Essentially, it's plain and simple, theft. I have been in contact with Yurita, the girl from the TikTok video, and trust me when I say she is not to be blamed for this. She was offered small compensation for the video and wasn't aware of the extent of what the company does. She has since contacted the company to remove the claims, as this was not her intention, but they now own the rights licensed to her videos, so they won't. She now has no say over her own content. This is theft and frankly disgusting. All of this is my opinion. Who do you think is right in this situation? Vanessa Hudgens made insensitive comments about the current virus situation. In an Instagram Live video on March 16th, Vanessa commented on the social distancing measures in place in the United States. Um, yeah, till July sounds like a bunch of bull****. I'm sorry, but like, it's a virus, I get it, like, I respect it, but at the same time, like, even if everybody gets it, like, yeah, people are gonna die. It's just terrible, but like, inevitable? I don't know, maybe I shouldn't be doing this right now. <laughs>
Many people were upset with her comments. What a horrible and heartless message for you to share with the younger people who look up to you. As a person who is immunocompromised, I find this especially disgusting. So we deserve to just die? This will haunt her for the rest of her life. To laugh at this unthinkable tragedy with an almost unimaginable scale of suffering. Unconscionable. Vanessa is inconvenienced and wishes people would hurry up and die so she can get her life back. How charming. The next day, Vanessa made another post on her Instagram story addressing the situation. So yesterday I did an Instagram live and I realized today that some of my comments are being taken out of context. Um, it's a crazy time. It's a crazy, crazy time. And I am at home and in lockdown. And that's what I hope you guys are doing too. In full quarantine and staying safe and sane. Um, yeah, I don't take the situation lightly by any means. I am home. So stay inside, y'all. She also posted a statement on her Twitter account. Hey guys, I am so sorry for the way I have offended anyone and everyone who has seen the clip from my Instagram Live yesterday. I realize my words were insensitive and not at all appropriate for the situation our country and the world are in right now. This has been a huge wake-up call about the significance my words have. Now, more than ever, I'm sending safe wishes to everyone to stay safe and healthy during this crazy time. Vanessa has a large audience mostly filled with young people. While nobody is perfect, she does have a responsibility to not put out harmful ideas or misinformation, especially during a crisis. What do you think about Vanessa's comments? Do you think her response was appropriate? What do you think about these stories? Let me know in the comments below.